In West Texas, outside Fort Davis, this is what you'll see. Acres of ranch land covered in this thick black ash. A devastating blow for people who depend on this land for a living. We've seen a lot of grass fires in our lifetime, in my lifetime, but I've never seen anything as devastating as what's happened in Fort Davis. For a deal coffee, West Texas is more than just home. My husband called me from the ranch and they were on their way in because the fire was coming this way. It's where her family makes their living. She has six generations of ranching behind her. So when wildfires threatened her home, she chose to stay. They were evacuating everybody, telling everybody to get out. And my husband just said, grab a water hose. So we did. We grabbed the water hose. I grabbed this one right here. As wildfires pushed through the Davis Mountains, ranchers rushed to get their livestock out. But not all of them could be found. We saw this bull wandering, looking for food in the flames. And then all of our um, engine gauges and enunciators. First Lieutenant Ryan McGuire uh, is eager to fly. Second. I actually love flying every second of it. And it's really just being in control of the aircraft is so much different than being a passenger in it. So we just check the aircraft, make sure everything's, everything's good. With but there's something different about McGuire many people would never notice. My leg actually stops here, but this, this prosthetic goes up to, uh, it goes up to here. McGuire used to have both legs. He was in the Air Force pilot training program when his dream of flying took a different turn. Lieutenant McGuire was injured in 2009 in a boating accident. His leg had to be amputated, but he was determined to come back. For a long time, there was a big question of what if, because this has never happened to a person in my stage of uh, stage of pilot training before. <laughs> I believe that the spirit of, of God touches them. Curanderismo, or spiritual healing, is a practice that's been around for centuries. They have to be blessed by God because it's just the way it makes you feel after they've done it and it's, it's a beautiful feeling. People turn to curanderos for problems with love, money and illness. In every human being we have two sides, angel one, evil one. It looks like a strip club, ladies dancing in nothing but lingerie. They used to dance on the pole and everything. They opened the legs and everything. Only there's no cover for this show. It's open to the public. All you have to do is drive by. They have elaborate lighting. They have elaborate staging. The girls come out in, um, you know, barely their outfits. Uh, so it's quite a scene. These dancers aren't inside. They're performing at street corners along busy highways in broad daylight to lure in customers at beer drive throughs Tuesday morning, the day of Angeline's surgery. Soon, Angeline is in the operating room, waiting to have a life-altering surgery performed that could have never been done in Uganda. Normally, all of the tests, the hospital room, the surgery, would have cost a small fortune but not in this case. These doctors, not just the cardiothoracic surgeon, but the cardiologist, the anesthesiologist, the pediatrician, the dentist, the intensivist, all those people do it for free. The operation is actually a common one. They stop Angeline's heart, put him on bypass, and then sew the patch to repair the hole. An estimated 35,000 people have been murdered in Mexico since December 2006. Many innocent civilians, all gruesome victims, as the drug cartels take on rivals, the Mexican military, and anyone else who gets in their way. The Mexican cartels right now are, are, are blood drunk. And fueling their terror? Firearms from the United States. Every rifle, every assault rifle, every automatic handgun that you're able to prevent from going into Mexico is an achievement in itself. 
which is why the U.S. government has made outbound inspections as much of a priority as inbound searches. Officers are looking for weapons and cash. These lanes from the United States into Mexico, this is their payday. That's the finish line. Last year, Customs and Border Protection officers from Brownsville to Del Rio seized $13.6 million in cash, more than 64,000 rounds of ammunition and 111 firearms. If you put it in the context of, of, a, of 100 people wielding weapons versus 100 people not wielding any weapons, I mean, it's a great achievement. And that's just at South Texas ports. During the same time period, San Antonio area Homeland Security investigation officers confiscated $31 million and nearly 800 firearms. Just about anything that fires a, a bullet, it, it's in demand. It can be sold in, in Mexico. And for quite a price. After all, the only legal gun store in Mexico is operated by the Mexican Army. And getting a permit to purchase one requires extensive background checks. So officials say the cartels turn to the U.S. The numbers vary depending on which government agency you talk to, but some reports indicate up to 90% of all weapons used by Mexico's drug cartels are traced back to the United States. The assault rifles, the AKs, the AR-15s, the automatic handguns, all those things are the weapons of choice. Every weapon you stop, every gun that you stop could, could actually save somebody's life. Mexican and American lives. U.S. Border Patrol agent Brian Terry was shot in the back with an AK-47 last December in Arizona. Investigators say two assault rifles found at the scene of Terry's murder originated in the United States. Two months later, another tragedy. ICE agent Jaime Zapata was shot and killed in an ambush while on assignment in Mexico. An investigation will determine if the weapons used came from the United States. It definitely hits home when all of a sudden it hits one of ours. Agent Zapata's death is a personal and daily reminder of just how important southbound inspections have become in the war on drugs. Officials say no seizure, no matter how many weapons or rounds of ammunition, is too small. Every one of those bullets can kill somebody. And, uh, and that's why even a seizure of 50 rounds of ammunition can make such a big impact. You just never know where that bullet's going to end up. Reporting from Laredo, Mileka Lincoln, Fox News at 9.